Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math. Today, my math lesson is on compound events, and we are going to be creating tree diagrams and using the fundamental counting principle. So here we go. Today, our objectives are to use tree diagrams, tables, and the fundamental counting principle to find the number of possible outcomes. And then students will find the probabilities of compound events using the results of this. So our question for today is how can you find the number of possible outcomes of multiple events? So first let's review some vocabulary so you understand the words that I'm using. A sample space. That's a sample space is all the possible outcomes of an event. So you're going to create this today using tree diagrams and tables. An event could be anything as far as rolling a die, selecting a marble from a bag, picking out an outfit, flipping a coin. It's anything that you do to talk about um, creating the sample space or conducting an experiment or when you want to know the probability of something occurring. A tree diagram is a tool to calculate the number of outcomes of an event. So it's a way to organize all the possible outcomes that can happen. And we're going to make one of these. And then we have the fundamental counting principle. And this states that if there are P number of ways to do one event and Q number of ways to do another event, then there are P multiplied by Q ways to do both events. So the fundamental counting principle is actually a way to show how to multiply all the outcomes of different events to get the total number of outcomes for all the events together. And again, I will model this for you. And then last, our compound event. That's the probability or possibility of more than one event occurring. So one of the examples we'll do is rolling a number cube and flipping a coin. So those are two different events, and we're going to put them together and imagine that if we rolled a coin and uh, flipped a coin and rolled a die at the same time, what would be the probability of different events? Or it could be you spin a spinner and roll a number cube. Anytime that there's two different events. Actually, if you're going to roll two number cubes, that's two different events because you have two different die that have two different outcomes. So first, let's talk about creating a sample space from a tree diagram. So we're going out for pizza and we're going to randomly choose a type of crust and a specialty pizza. I want to create a tree diagram to represent the sample space. So the sample space is going to represent all the combinations of this. How many different pizzas can I make? So I'm going to start it and then you're going to finish it. So we have three different crust choices. I could get a pan, a thin or stuffed crust. So those are going to be what we call our branches. We're going to start off with that pan, thin and stuffed. This is our first choice. So think of it as a vertical thing, a vertical list. And I've just brought my choices over to the right. I've just physically taken these and written them right down here. So now I got to go to my pizza. So now after I've selected one of these three types of crust, then I have four different pizza choices that I can pick. So we're going to branch those off of here. So I could pick pan and cheeseburger, pan and taco, pan and veggie, and pan and chicken parm. So over here, just with pan pizza, there's four different outcomes. Pan cheeseburger, pan taco, pan veggie, pan chicken parm. So now what I would like you to do is take a turn at finishing this tree diagram and see if you can do that. So please pause and see if you can finish it. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So you're physically going to go to thin and you're going to add these four choices. So we're going to have these four more branches off and off of stuffed the same four choices off of here. So you can see that this is how we call this a tree diagram. And we'll physically take this and make a vertical list. And then we take these and branch it off each of those choices. So now we can use this to calculate. This is our sample space and all our different kinds of pizzas that we could order from this pizza menu. So you can see how they're all branching off. So now I want you to tell me how many different pizza combinations could you create from this pizza place? So go ahead and pause, look at over your sample space and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. I hope you discovered that there were 12 different outcomes. 
pan cheeseburger, pan taco, pan veggie, pan chicken parm, and we go down and do the same four with thin and the same four with stuffed. And you can also see the connection here that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve different branches to our tree diagram. Now, a tree diagram could get really complicated. You could have a third. I could have said the kind of cheese you wanted, and each one of these could have branched off from the specialty type of pizza. So you could see that a tree diagram could get very confusing and very messy very quickly. So typically a tree diagram is good if you have two, sometimes three different choices. But when you start getting into more choices of different items that you want to put together, a tree diagram can get very confusing and I'm going to show you a better way to calculate your sample space. So now let's use this to find probability. So I want to know what is the probability that I'm going to randomly choose a stuffed crust pizza that is cheeseburger. So go ahead and see if you can calculate that uh, compound probability. Remember, it's compound because it's two events. You're choosing the type of crust and the type of pizza. Please pause. Come back when you're ready. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So the answer is 1 out of 12 because there's only one stuffed crust option that's cheeseburger. Only one of these branches represents both of those. So one out of all 12 in my sample space is this. So the probability of randomly choosing a stuffed crust cheeseburger pizza is one out of 12. All right, let's create a table. We're gonna create this sample space to represent flipping a coin and rolling a die. So my event outcomes for flipping my coin and for rolling my die. So I'm gonna fill it in. I can get a he flip heads and roll a one. I could flip tails and roll a one. Now I'm going to say that I could flip heads and get a two. And I'm going to ask you to finish the sample space. So go ahead and pause, finish it out, and come back when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So here is the whole completed sample space, our organized table, showing that I want you now to tell me how many different outcomes that there are to rolling a die and flipping a coin. So go ahead and write down what you think the sample space is and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. I hope you came up with a sample space of 12. So we have 12 different cells to our table and each one is a different outcome. All right, now I wanna know what is the probability of rolling an even number and flipping tails? Please use the sample space we created in this table to find the probability. Pause, come back when you're ready. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So I'm gonna highlight some cells in this table for you because to roll an even number, that's a two, a four, or a six, and then in addition to that, it had to be tails. So I had three different outcomes. I could do tails and roll a two, flip tails and roll a four, or flip tails and roll a six. So out of my 12 possible outcomes, three of them were what I was looking for. And I always simplify those ratios. So I have a one in four chance. If you turned it into a percent and said 25%, that works for me too. All right, let's talk about the fundamental counting principle. So sometimes in life, we just have so many different options that creating a table or creating a tree diagram would be really improbable. It'd be very messy and it just would not be efficient. So there has this thing called the fundamental counting principle. And if you're wanting to know all the different um, possible outcomes from choosing from many different choices on a menu or um, anything, a closet, it could be a closet, it could be your outfit, right? You could have eight different shirts, four different pairs of pants, and six different pairs of shoes, and you want to know, even not worrying about the matching, how many different combinations could you put together? So this is when we use the fundamental counting principle. So we're going to the ice cream sh shop, and I have four different choices over here for picking a cone. There's three cones and a dish, so I have four choices of how they're going to serve me my ice cream. And then when I come over here, I have seven different flavors of ice cream. So we can calculate the, prob the 
sample space of how many different combinations of ice cream I can order just from these two choices by using our fundamental counting principle. So the, pro the number of peas, which is our first choice, is four. And then our second, we have seven different selections. We multiply them together and we can discover that there are 28 outcomes to this. Our sample space has 28 different items. It could be plain cone coffee crunch, plain cone peppermint stick, plain cone chocolate swirl, plain cone cookie dough, plain cone coconut delight, plain cone black raspberry, plain cone peaches and cream. And then we'd have to do it again for sugar cone, again for waffle cone, and again for dish. So you could see that I could start with these four branches and each one of those would have seven branches represented off of that if I made a tree diagram. Four times seven gives me a sample space with 28 different outcomes. So your turn. I've added to the ice cream menu. You have choice number three. You are going to figure out what your sample space would be if you pick just one from each of your, these categories. Go ahead and pause, come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So the fundamental counting principle can work even though it's P times Q, we can add another letter and we can add the three different choices that we have. So again, we still have four ways they're gonna serve us our ice cream, either on one of these three cones or a dish. Then we still have our seven ice cream flavors, well, we have added sprinkles and candy and hot fudge and bananas, and there's six different choices for toppings over here. So when you multiply four times seven times six, you get 168 different outcomes. So by just looking at this little menu right here, there's 168 different combinations that you could make. Imagine going to the sub shop and seeing all the different meats, cheeses, vegetables, dressings, condiments, different rolls. Think about that next time you're out and all the choices you have and how many possible outcomes you have. So that's our lesson today on creating tree diagrams and using the fundamental counting principle to help us find the probability of compound events. I hope you enjoyed the lesson today and found something useful from it. Please come back for more and go ahead and subscribe to my channel and, and support um, some more math lessons coming your way.